Hamooligans, hamooligans, spell like jam, but sounds like hell. Hamooligans, hamooligans, listen along with your friends and fam. It's time to hear from the pastors again. Welcome in to Hamooligans, the podcast of the pastors of Hamool Community Church in San Diego, California. Thank you for joining us. You can find this podcast and other great teachings from JCC on our church app, on iTunes, Google Play, or wherever you find your favorite podcasts. Please subscribe and leave a review. It helps get the word out to others about good Christian content for the whole family. And we have a unique show for you today because I had the privilege last week of interviewing Pastor Abraham from India. JCC has been supporting his Bible school and church planning ministry since 2012, so you may have heard of him, but if you're like me, you really didn't understand a lot about his ministry or life, so today is a golden opportunity for us. And this opportunity really came about because of COVID-19. A few weeks back, Pastor Abraham reached out to Vic, whom you will hear him pronounce as Wick in the interview, so uh, for those of you American speakers uh, you, you might be unfamiliar with, with that accent, but that is our own Vic Murphy, uh, missions pastor here at JCC. So Abraham's Bible school couldn't find food for the almost 200 people on campus. India was in a three week lockdown. And, uh, because he had a relationship, a close relationship with Vic through the years, um, they were able to do some fundraising and help and, uh, through action sports outreach and, uh, Vic and Shelley they were able to provide some help for for Pastor Abraham and his ministry. So that's what this interview is going to be about. It's going to be a little bit about him and a little bit about what God's doing in their world right now with the COVID-19 outbreak. And uh, it's, it's a really, really powerful story. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy the interview. It is a, on a, it's a WhatsApp interview that was really difficult to come about. So I'll just apologize now for some of the clunkiness of the interview, but I think it still communicates. And uh, wow, you know, here we are traveling from room to room in our houses as we as we try to record and, and co- communicate with each other. And now we're taking homologans around the world. So we are grateful just for this chance to, to speak with him via, via, via India, via the WhatsApp. So... Hope you enjoy. Pastor Abraham, thanks for taking the time out of your busy schedule during this stressful time to talk with us. Hi. Uh, Would you start out by introducing yourself and your family and just a little bit of your history with JCC uh, with the listeners? My name is Sunny Abraham. My wife's name is Mercy. I have three kids. Stephen, Silas, and Susan. And uh, last uh, 20 years, I'm serving the Lord in India. And way back in 2012, first time I met Wick uh, during one of his uh, outreach. And uh, during the time, I spent almost uh, uh, more than a week with him and shared what God has put in my life and a vision to training men and women and send them into the mission field and plan churches in the in the most unengaged people group and from that point onwards he has been very close to our life and he used to pray for us and uh, his close friends uh, john and dustin has been a huge partner in the ministry uh, whenever i have a struggle difficulties they used to pray for me and uh, financially support us in many many occasions and also uh, they used to come to India and serve along us, with us in different places in India. And we could always talk about uh, his church and he says uh, his church has a, have a big heart for mission. And um, I was very encouraged by seeing Wake, John and Dustin, the mind for mission, the heart for mission and the passion they have. And how did you become a Christian? What was that? Could tell us just a little bit about the important story uh, or the important ways that God reached you and, and, and brought you into his kingdom. I and my wife, we started uh, serving the Lord in the slum. 
when we were working in the slum we saw um uh, the poverty and the struggle and the pain and agony the people were going through that really broke my heart children half naked empty stomach go to bed a woman in a desperate situation and that's how we started working with the children and also planted our first church since uh, my wife is from the northeast and i'm from south i used to travel quite often to the north in india and we saw uh, hundreds of thousands of villages have not heard the name of jesus once in the lifetime that's how our heart is to plan churches and in 2011 we brought six students to train them and send them into the mission field but the same year we got 18 student and we trained them and the 18 student graduated after one year of their training they went back and planted 24 house churches that was very encouraging in our life the following year we had 30 student then 40 students 50 students we have now 160 students staying in the campus and uh, we are training them and within the last 9 years 500 house churches has been planted all over india So your Bible school and ministry uh, are called Great Harvest. Can you tell us about where that name came from and just just what exactly that is? When I was uh, reading the scripture, God's words started to speak my heart, especially Jesus teaching on the sermon on the mount, sermon on the plain, and Jesus command go into the world and preach the gospel. And all the disciples they were so serious and serving the lord and they gave their very life to preaching in preaching the gospel and paul he said for me uh, to live is christ and die is gain and he's ambitious to preach christ and uh, i saw all this thing my heart was really touched and one of the scripture really moved my heart was matthew chapter 9 when jesus went to the villages cities he was moved with compassion when he saw people they were dispirited scattered abroad and uh, then jesus said the harvest is great the workers are few pray the lord of harvest will send the labors into the harvest field that word was my life scripture the harvest is great so we use the word great harvest that's how the great harvest bible college the name came And I believe your wife was part of of opening a shop which was kind of a new ministry something that that branched out or came out of Great Harvest but uh but why was this ministry begun and who exactly does that does that shop reach God started to bless Great Harvest Bible College in a different in a powerful ways and uh, God started to use our students as a wonderful instrument in touching the lives of the people of the gospel and plant churches as uh, the ministry is growing the need started to grow and we thought ourselves we need to do something some business as a mission to sustain so my wife had a, a big vision of starting a garment factory and help women in the slum those women who out of prostitution in poverty line give them a job that's how my wife uh, learned how to stage how to design and she made uh, the shirt and uh, we begin with a small garment factory and uh, slowly it started to grow now we have almost like a 40 women working at the garment factory and that's how we started the uh, one of the businesses then slowly we started our school the private school and uh, even we have a provisional store as well these are the entities that are really supporting the great harvest pastor abraham the covid-19 virus has affected the entire world how specifically has it affected your community and your ministry by god's grace everything was going well and we had a wonderful students and heading towards the graduation on uh, 29th of march and uh, and uh, thinking of uh, having a large pastors conference with all our graduate with 500 church planters and uh, our business was going good and uh, all of the sudden as we all know the corona virus has uh, hit very badly in india and the indian government uh, decided to shut down uh, for 21 days and uh, before they declared the state government had shut down for 3 days and we have to close down all our businesses garment factories schools and everything and all on the sudden the next day we didn't have enough food to feed our students and uh, it was a very challenging time and we started to depend on god and put our 
trust in the Lord and we prayed and shared few of our friends. One of the friends I shared was weak. As soon as I shared, uh, he called me a couple of times, prayed with me and uh, he started to help us uh, in the desperate time. And he said, Sonny, and uh, we will continue to pray and uh, our church will be praying for you. For you, That was a huge blessing in our life. And same time, uh, almost all the church planters were working, uh, working in the most remote places. And they started to call me and said their struggle, their, uh, their, their difficulties uh, they are facing and their communities. That's all broke our heart. And uh, we are trusting God uh, to help uh, these church planter as well. Can you tell us about how you've been able to help feed people in your area, not just people at your Bible school, but, but many more? And how did God use that food to give open doors for the gospel today and the gospel going forward in the future? The good news that Jesus loves them and he's died for their sins. Many of them, as you, you've said already, are, are Muslim. Many of them are Hindu. And so how has this been a unique opportunity for you? When we were in desperate need and uh, the virus has affected and uh, locked down and uh, in a very confusion state, and I shared the needs to Wake and, uh, you know, Wake and uh, Dustin and uh, John, they started to contribute and help us. Uh, and uh, as soon as the funds came here, we were really thankful to the Lord and uh, we said, praise the Lord and uh, went to the market and bought 100 bags of rice to sustain the Bible college. As soon as the bag reached home, I got a call from the uh, village chief and said that one of the community in our village, uh, over a thousand two hundred people living there, and they are gypsy community. And all they do is they go out begging or scrapping metals or uh, you know taking plastic from the street. And uh, because of the lockdown, they have been there for uh, three days. They didn't have any food. And can you uh, come and help us? And I thought the bags of rice is to help the Bible college. But when I saw the needs, and I know these communities, we did a couple of times ministry with them. I know some of the people there, and God immediately said, we have to feed them. And I took a bunch of rice and uh, cooked the food, and uh, we fed the nest a couple of hours, 1,200 people. And uh, after that, I, I'm... And keep getting calls after calls from all, almost all the church planters saying about the needs. And uh, I'm just trusting the Lord. God will open the door. And uh, in this crucial time, uh, we can show uh, Christ's love through helping and feeding uh, these people who are in desperate need. Well, how can we pray for you? Just as we wrap up our time together, how can we pray for you? And, and what would you like to say to Christians in America during this difficult time uh, around the world. I humbly request, uh, please do pray for us. And uh, your church has been a huge, huge blessing for many, many years. And, uh, and when we hear uh, America is going through deep crisis, like hundreds and thousands of people are dying, our heart breaks. And uh, we, as a church, and the Bible College students, we are praying for America. And especially we are praying for your church. And please do pray for us and uh, uh, pray that God will open resources so that uh, we can feed our students and the community who are living in a desperate situation. And uh, one of our uh, graduate, he is feeding a leper community. Usually the lepers has to go out uh, for begging. Now they don't have food because of the lockdown and uh, we are feeding leper community. Pastor Abraham, thank you so much for your time today. And we will absolutely keep praying for you, keep supporting you. I'm so glad we had this chance to get to know you and your ministry through this interview. It is, uh, it is so encouraging. It's just uplifting to hear how God is using your life and, and your work, your family's work there in India. And uh, let's just keep pressing on together for the glory of the kingdom. We are trusting God and uh, we have put our purpose and dependence on God. Go to open uh, doors and means and ways for our life. Well, unfortunately, we got cut off a little bit there at the end. The internet was a little bit spotty. and it was, Like I said, it was a little difficult to do, but it, it, I think the message communicated well. And so um, that's going to do it this week for our homooligans. Don't forget to check out our other weekly episode, which is called Weekly Bread. It's a, it's a 10 to 15 minute devotional message from one of the pastors. 
Remember the Mulligan slogan, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is love, lovely, admirable. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think on these things. That's Philippians 4, 8. And uh, we do have a winner for our Bravos contest, and we'll, we'll select that next week out of the, uh, the goblet of goodness, the, uh, the cup of consequence, the, the chalice of reward. We will draw from that and, uh, and see who is our winner of the, the Bravos $20 gift card. And the pastors will be back together next week in a Zoom room, not, not live yet. Uh, keep praying for, for the Lord to heal and, uh, and restore, restore us to some normalcy. For our outro today, we're going to use one of Pastor Abraham's uh, church planners, one of the graduates of his Bible school. And this is with a group of people after they had received some of the food. And uh, it's just a, a cool, cool way to end our show today. Until next time. Thank you. I am no, I am no seeing you. Who are you? But you, thank you so much, sir. You provided for us, for me, sir. Dal chawal rice, and uh, thank you so much, sir. Sunny Abraham, sir. And uh, many people suffering this time, but you pro uh, provide for us, sir. Thank you so much. You help us. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Sir, uh, sunny, sir, sunny, uh, sunny, sir, Appa, thank you so much, sir, Sunny Abraham, sir, thank you so much. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! Hallelujah!